Last time on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I just don't know. I'm, I'm not going to take a chance. I'll take the money, Chris. Final answer? Yes, I'll take the money, Chris. OK, give him a big hand. He goes away with £64,000. Well, me and my friends play a drinking game, and uh, on that one, they say the answer's always B. So on the strength of the drinking game you play with your mates, you're going for Mary the First? Yeah. You have £32,000? You still have £32,000. It's the wrong answer. Is that the money? Yes, please. What does it mean to you? Oh, the world, yes. Thank you. OK, give her a big hand. She came for 6000 She goes away with 8000 <laughs> Another audience filled with riffraff. Hello, welcome to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? It's amazing what we learn about the people who come on this show. Little things that you, at home, you never get to find out because they don't quite make it past Fastest Finger and into the hot seat. Lots of contestants tell us that their families at home are convinced they're going to embarrass them big time in front of the whole nation. Like one woman a couple of weeks ago who found a lucky pin on the way to the studio and insisted on wearing it through the whole show in her knickers. And the guy whose whole family was scared rigid that if he got into the chair, he'd do his famous elk impression. <laughs> but a favourite yet is on our last show on Tuesday night, we had a guy called John. Now, his wife was absolutely terrified that her husband was going to shame the whole family by waving badly at the start of the show. So much so that she got him to practice at home and used to wave him off to work each day with a variety of approved style. <laughs> absolutely true. So here we go again. It's time to meet ten brand new contestants now feeling just that little bit more self-conscious about how they're going to wave to millions of strangers on television tonight. Let's meet them and enjoy their waves. And they are <laughs> Michael Domini from Cheshire, <laughs> Catherine Chambers from London, Nikki Ambrose from West Yorkshire, Howard Sykes from Kent, Harry Stanley from Surrey, Ken Leggett from Kent. Neville Brooks from London. Miles Robson from North Yorkshire. Joe Montgomery from Kent. And Robert Bridges from Hampshire. Well done, everybody. Right, it's fastest finger first. Now, as always, first player in the hot seat this Saturday night will be the one who puts the four answers in the correct order in the fastest time. This is where they need total concentration, please. Lots of silence from the audience. Good luck, everybody. Here comes the first question this Saturday night. Put these letters of the alphabet in alphabetical order. Q, W, E, R. Now, hopefully all ten got that right, but presumably... Let's see who got it right the first time. First of all, then, let's just check the sequence. Alphabetical order, let's just double-check it. E. Then it's Q, then it's R, then it's W. Right, that's the right order. Now, ten contestants, how many got it right? Not all of them at all. Who was fastest? Miles Robson in 6.46. Miles, it's you! Boy, you know your alphabet. Oh, you got that right. Seven didn't even get lucky. It's going to be an uphill struggle, Miles. Thank yeah. God you're here. Want to pay for a million pounds? Yeah, I'm from this guy. Well, you might have lost it, but... So, first contestant this Saturday night, Miles Robson, a factory worker from Whitby in North Yorkshire. Up in the audience is his brother Jim, and watching at home are his mum Mary, dad Tony, along with his sisters Lisa and Linda, and other brother Mark. And all five of those are his phone of friends. Talk about keeping it all in the family. Now, Miles works in a yoghurt factory. He gets to stare at 10,000 gallons of yoghurt every single day. So no wonder he says he'd like to win enough money to stop doing that and resume his studies at university. He also says he hasn't slept for the last two weeks worrying about coming on here. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. I mean, really not slept or just sort of catnapped? Well, no more than four hours a night. Do you, um, do you ever eat yoghurt? 
I eat it less than I used to. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, um, when you talk about resuming your studies at university, what, what, would you, what did you do? What, what do you want to go back to do? Um, mathematics. I mathematics? Do, yeah. That's your main thing? Yeah. What would be, um, I mean, if you're actually working, what would be realistically a nice sum of money for you? Um, well, a thousand pounds would be nice. <laughs> Well, I think we can, uh, I hope we can get you there. Yeah. All right, Miles, well, fingers crossed. Um, rules are the same as always. Miles is now just 15 correct answers away from winning one million pounds. Now, remember, as we always say, they're only easy if you know the answer. That is so true on this show. If you do get stuck, Miles has got three lifelines. He's got 50-50. He can phone a friend and, of course, he can ask the audience. OK, Miles, lots of luck. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? OK, Miles, be positive. Let's get you at least £1,000. Question number one is for £100. Here it comes. Which of these means a very intelligent person? Bright spark. Clever flare. Brainy flicker. Quick flash. That's a bright spark. It's right answer, you've got 100 quid. <laughs> this is question number two. Have a look. Which of these is a sweet cake made from oats? Fuss John. Panic James. Dither Jim. Flap Jack. You wondered where we were going, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Frankly, so did I. Yeah, that's Flap Jack. Right answer, you've got 200 degrees. When I'm asked, no problem. <laughs> right, question number three for 300 pounds. Here it is. What's the name for the building in which horses are housed? Cable. Gable. Stable. This could be Mabel. Table. That's a stable. Right answer, £300. No problem at all so far. <laughs> right, uh, question number four for 500 quid. Just take your time on these. Just be aware, Miles, I'm sure you won't need them, but the lifelines are there if you get stuck. Have a look. This is for £500. Question number four. Which phrase identifies a person born after World War II in the period when the birth rate shot up? Baby boomer. Baby bouncer. Baby buggy. Baby bonus. That's a baby boomer. It's the right answer. You've got 500 pounds. <laughs> right, question number five will guarantee you a thousand. Just be aware, Miles, at the last point, you could go home with nothing. Which sign on a computer keyboard resembles an equal sign scored through with two sloping parallel lines. Hash, slash, dash, flash. That's a hash. Sure? Yeah, I think so. OK, it's the right answer. You've got 1,000 pounds, which is what you want to, what That's guaranteed. So whatever happens tonight, you can go back to Yorkshire with your head held high with at least £1,000 in your hand and you can have a good night's sleep. Have a look at question number six for £2,000. You've still got all three lifelines. Here we go. Who founded a London waxworks museum in 1835? Madame Tussaud. Madame Bovary. Madame Butterfly. Madame Pompadour. That's Madame Tussaud. Sure. Yes. Ever been there? Been outside it. Been outside. <laughs> on the plane. Final answer. Yeah, final answer. So right answer, you wanted one thousand pounds, you got two thousand pounds. <laughs> hey Mars, I think you might be a bit of a dark horse here. You've got two thousand pounds, you only wanted a thousand, you said. You'd be more than happy. Uh, you've still got all three lifelines. You've had no problem at all so far. Question number seven. Have a look at this for four thousand. Ellen Road is the home of which football club? Sheffield Wednesday, Leeds United, Newcastle United, Middlesbrough. That's Leeds United. So if you get that wrong, you wouldn't dare go home, would you? No. <laughs> final answer? Yeah, final answer. It's the right answer. You've got 4,000. <laughs> Have a look. Question number eight. You double your money here if you give me a right answer. You've got 50 50. Phone a friend and ask this audience. Still intact. Have a look. Tell us what you want to do. Which TV superhero was played by Linda Carter? Wonder Woman, Supergirl, Bionic Woman, Supergram. That's Wonder Woman. Sure. Not Bionic Woman. 
No, I think it's Wonder Woman. Not Supergirl. Uh, <laughs> Great character Supergirl was. You play? Final answer? Yeah, I'll play. So, right answer, you got £8,000. <laughs> Look at number nine. If you give me a right answer, it's worth £16,000. Here it comes. What's the pseudonym of the fictional character Sir Percy Blakeney? Zorro. Ivanhoe. Artful Dodger. Scarlet Pimpernel. That's a Scarlet Pimpernel. How do you know? I just do. Uh... Final answer? <laughs> yeah, final answer. It's spot on, you got £16,000. <laughs> now, I won't ask you, but um, I suspect I know how long working in a yoghurt factory it would take you to earn £16,000. At this moment, you got £16,000 here, tax free. You can walk away with that, but the next question is worth a guaranteed minimum of £32,000. You got a 50-50. You've got to phone a friend and you've got to ask this audience left. Just take your time, tell me what you want to do. The appendix is a worm-like structure attached to which part of the human body? Kidney, large intestine, stomach, lung. It's a large intestine. Not the stomach? No. Happy to play, you lose 15,000 if you're wrong. Yeah, final answer. It's the right answer, you got 32,000 pounds, Miles! Hey! Fantastic! And you still have not used any lifelines. You're five away from one million. You've got all three lifelines left, and at the moment you're guaranteed to go... Come on, take it. It's yours. Oh, right. it. Do we like with it? Stick it in your pocket, whatever. Mm. You're just looking at it. You can. Yeah, I've never seen a check that big. <laughs> it's yours now. Whatever happens, whatever happens tonight, you go home with that. Have a really good sleep. Mm. <laughs> and wake up tomorrow and go and get absolutely legless. <laughs> okay, you got thirty-two thousand pounds. All right. How do you feel? I'm feeling a lot better now. <laughs> Question number 11 is worth £64,000. You've got a 50-50, phone a friend and ask the audience. You're five away from one million. This is question number 11 of a possible 15. Have a look at it. Robin Williams won an Oscar for his role in which film? Dead Poets Society. Good Morning Vietnam. Good Will Hunting. Mrs Doubtfire. I think I'll ask the audience for this one. OK. It's worth £64,000, everybody. Hardly any pressure on you. Uh, obviously, Miles, you don't take their answer, but you might as well answer this question no matter what, even if you use all three lifelines. Have a look at the possibilities, then. This is it, audience. Robin Williams won an Oscar for his role in which film? A, B, C or D. It's worth £64,000. All vote now. Miles, when they do that, it means they haven't got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> They're just going wibble, dibble, dibble, wibble, wibble. <laughs> yes, well done, everybody. I was thinking Goodwill Hunting. It's up to you. 31%. It's not that high. 28% are saying Good Morning Vietnam. Uh, 25 for Dead Poets Society. It's your call. You can go 50 50, get rid of two of those. Uh, you can find a friend. I think I'll do 50-50. OK, computer, take away two wrong answers. Leave Miles the right answer and one remaining random answer. Well, those are the two that got the most votes. Uh, 31 said Goodwill Hunting, 28 said Good Morning Vietnam. It's up to you. Yeah, I'll go for Goodwill Hunting. Final answer. Final answer. You've got £32,000. We'll take a break. Join us again in a couple of minutes. <laughs> in the second part of tonight's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Don't go away. <laughs> oh, 
Welcome back to the second part of tonight's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? It's Saturday night, just before the break, Miles Robson, who was flying along on £32,000, got this question. Robin Williams won an Oscar for his role in which film? Used 50-50, ended up with Good Morning Vietnam. Oh, I can't be bothered. You've got the right answer, £64,000. <laughs> Why drag it out any longer? Well done, Miles. Give us a check back. Give us that one. I couldn't drag it out any longer. You deserve this £64,000. Have a look at that one. It's good here, isn't it? Have a look at that. Yeah. Shake, Miles, you're shaking. Miles. Mm. <laughs> that would take um, quite a while, wouldn't it? Working in the factory. Six years, I think. Six years. Right, now listen, don't lose it. You've got £64,000. Question number 12 is for £125,000. Have a look at it. You're guaranteed 32000 but at the moment you've got £64,000. Have a look at this, question number 12 of a possible 15. The frontier town of Dodge City was in which state? Arizona, South Dakota, Colorado, Kansas. You've got £64,000. It's worth a huge £125,000. Take as long as you need. Thinking, you got an inkling. I think it might be Kansas. Take your time, it's a huge amount of money. I think I'll phone a friend. Okay, who are you gonna phone? From Mark. Mark? Yeah. Is that your brother? Yeah, it's my brother. Your brother's yeah. okay. Phone Mark, take his answer. You obviously don't have to necessarily play this question at all, you can still take sixty-four thousand pounds. The older brother or young brother? Older. Hello? Mark? Yeah, speaking. Hi, yeah, it's Chris Tarrant here on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Wow. <laughs> now, good news. Yep. Miles, Miles, your brother's in the chair. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, very good news. He's doing rather well. Oh, good. That's what I like to hear. What would you expect him to get up to? Oh, I'd, uh, I reckon 250 easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not that clever. Well, he may be. I've got, uh, got confidence in him. He, well, I tell you what, it may not be uh, that unfounded at all. At the moment, he's on £64,000. Wow. Yeah, it does mean that your answer to this question, if you can give him the right answer, is worth £125,000. Okay. Okay. Miles, lots of luck. 30 seconds, your time starts now. All right, Matt. Hi, Miles. <laughs> the frontier town of Dodge City was in which state? Arizona, South Dakota, Colorado, or Kansas? Blimey. Again, miles quick. Arizona, South Dakota, Colorado, or Kansas? That's Dodge City. I'd maybe think Colorado, but I couldn't be sure at all that miles. Which is not what you thought, is it? No. I think I'll play Kansas. You know, you're guaranteed 32,000. Yeah. You've never had 32,000. No. And you're risking losing that amount of money. It's your call. The frontier town of Dodge City was in which state? Arizona, South Dakota, Colorado, Kansas. One of those is worth 125,000 pounds. I think I better go. <laughs> take, take as long as you need. Have a good look at it. It's up to you. Arizona, South Dakota, Colorado, Kansas. I think I'll play Kansas. <laughs> Final answer. Well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Huge amount of money. Yeah. As you said, you've got six years' wages at the moment, £64,000, but it's worth 12 years. Yeah, I'll play Kansas. Final answer. Final answer. You just won 100... <laughs> Oh, you're good. Give me that. You won't want that. 
You don't need that. Fantastic. Oh, ha, ha. This is the guy, when he arrives, said, well, if I get £1,000, it'll be a good night. £125,000. <laughs> Your brother reckon Colorado. You had that thing about cancer's just niggling away, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Back of right, back. well, have a look at this one, then. That's a very... You like that one? That's very, very nice. That's 12 years working in the factory doing <laughs> yoghurt. Maybe no more. Yeah, you may not race back to the yoghurt no. factory with £125,000. Now, again... You can still lose that. You're guaranteed £32,000. Give me a wrong answer here, you lose £93,000. I don't think I'll be gambling on this one. <laughs> Let's have a look. Question, you might like it. Question number yeah. 13. £250,000. You've got no lifelines. You obviously don't have to play this, but it's worth a quarter of a million. You are three away from one million. Have a look at this. Question number 13 of a possible 15. What colour is the tongue of the chow breed of dog? Blue, black, pink, yellow, brown, white. I think it's time for me to go. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all think it's time for you to go. <laughs> oh, you dropped 93,000 pounds. I think. Um, this would be a pure guess if I went for it. You've got 125,000 pounds. Final answer, you can take the money? Yeah, I'll Huge take the money. Check. Yeah. What does it mean, truthfully? What, what is 100? I mean, I know you can't even think about it at the moment, but. What would £125,000 do for your life? Well, get me a house, a car, <laughs> holiday. Yeah. yeah, you get a bit of sleep as well. Yeah, get a bit of sleep, it. yeah. <laughs> Buy okay. a new bed as well. A new bed? <laughs> Good. <laughs> you can have two beds for £125,000. OK, um, just... Because you did look at... A second there, you did look sort of vaguely tempted. What were you going for? I don't think it'll be pink or white. I think it might be blue, black. OK, you're definitely going to take the money. Yeah, I'll take the money. Give him a big hand. He goes away with £125,000. <laughs> yes, before you go. Just before you go racing off uh, back to Yorkshire to get the first bit of sleep you've had for a fortnight, um, I can tell you, because it'll annoy you the rest of your life, and I can tell you that if you had said to me blue, black, I'd be taking that cheque off you, I'd be tearing it into a thousand pieces, and I'd be writing you a cheque for a quarter of a million. It was the right answer. <laughs> hey, what a night. £125,000. <laughs> well played, mate. Congratulations. Fantastic. Have a great night. <laughs> oh, what a great start. Top load, Miles Robson. Goes back to Whitby, probably not back to the yoghurt factory, though, with £125,000. Now, we've got nine contestants left. It's fastest finger first again. Four answers, one correct order. Nice and quiet in the audience. They need to concentrate. Here comes the next question. Starting with the earliest, put these TV soaps in the order they were first seen. Brookside, Home and Away, Coronation Street, Emmerdale Farm. OK, nine contestants left. Let's see the right order, then, starting with the earliest. Uh, Coronation Street, fairly obviously, started actually back in 1960, over 40 years now. Uh, Emmerdale Farm then became Emmerdale, actually started in 72. Uh, Brookside, Brookie started in 82. And then Home and Away started in 89. That's the right order. Now, nine left. How many got it right? All these got it right. Not that many. Who was fastest? Uh, Robert Bridges in 5.6 seconds. <laughs> But at last he's paid off. Want to play for a million pounds? I do. I'd very much like to do that. Right, great start tonight. Now, this is contestant number two, Robert Bridges. He's a budding children's author from Romsey in Hampshire. Up in the audience, his wife, Marilyn, and watching at home with the kids, Kemp and Catherine. As former banker, Robert and Marilyn first met on the phone. Marilyn worked for a rival firm and thought he had a lovely voice. Hello. So colleagues <laughs> fixed up a meeting between them. They're now uh, married. They've been married for 12 years. Marilyn says she stays with him for the laughs. <laughs> Beside his planning his uh, children's book, Robert is a gourmet cook. 
but very messy with it. Very, very messy with it. He uses every available pan, even to make a sandwich. <laughs> and once left a particularly fine apple tart to cool on the garage floor, whereupon Marilyn went and stepped in it. <laughs> Still served it that night to their guests at dinner, apparently. <laughs> if he does, it's a funny household. If he does do well tonight, Robert would like to buy Marilyn a new black cab and take the kids on holiday to Las Vegas. That's all fairly accurate, isn't it? That's, um, yeah, that's right. Yes, a strange family. So, Marilyn drives, actually, I mean, she's not a cabbie, but she drives a black cab for fun. She drives a black cab. Uh, it's great for the kids. Uh, it's, uh, you know, we put bicycles, all sorts of kit in the back. Great. Is Vegas good for kids? I mean, they normally want to go to places like it's, Disneyland. It's like the new Disneyland. Apparently, you know, you don't have to gamble, you just go. It's, uh, it's terrific. <laughs> so, really, you want to go to Vegas? Well, oh, come you on, yeah. Robert. Yeah. <laughs> and if you win any money at all, the first thing you can do is buy Marilyn a bunch of flowers. Bunch of flowers, yep. OK. Um, now, don't forget, you can practice playing millionaire anytime, 24 hours a day, online at the website. Uh, our website is www.itv.co.uk. If you want to play for real, though, you know the number to call. It's the number Robert called, 09068 444444, and you could be here playing for a million pounds. We've already seen a cheque for £125,000 on its way to Whitby tonight. Robert now has got 15 questions and three new lifelines. Robert, lots of luck. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? OK, question number one for £100. Have a look. Tell me the answer. Here it comes. Which of these is Britain's only poisonous snake? Multiplier. Divider. Adder. Subtractor. That has to be an adder. It has to be. What a lovely speaking voice. It has to be an adder. You've got £100. <laughs> is that the voice that Marilyn... That's the one. That's, that's the one. one. That's yep. the one. OK, question number two for £200, have a look. Which of these refers to an alcoholic drink served with ice? Shingled, on the rocks, pebble-dashed, stoned. On the rocks. It's the right answer, you've got £200. <laughs> OK, question number three for 300 quid. You've still got three lifelines, here it is. At which specific time of day does AM change to PM? Dawn, midday, dusk, midnight. Midday. That's the right answer, you've got £300. <laughs> OK, question number four for £500. Just take your time with these, just be aware that if you gave me a wrong answer up to question number five, you would go home with nothing. I'm sure it won't happen, you've got all those lifelines. It's question number four. Which fabric shares its name with a British river? Damask, Hessian. Khaki. Tweed. That's tweed. That was very nearly very nasty for a minute, wasn't it? It's <laughs> so right answer, you've got £500. <laughs> it's not the river Khaki, it's the river Tweed. <laughs> right, last point, you could go home with nothing. First point, you could guarantee yourself going home with a serious amount of money. This would bring you at least £1,000. Question number five, here it is. In which location are the famous seats known as the front benches situated? Canterbury Cathedral. Wembley Stadium. Buckingham Palace, House of Commons. House of Commons, Chris. It's the right answer, you've got £1,000. Well done. You're very calm so far? Um, on the outside. No. Inside you're quivering. OK, uh, you've got £1,000, that's guaranteed. You've got ten questions between you and a million. Uh, you've got three lifelines. Have a look at number six. What type of vehicle was a Saturn V? What type of vehicle was a Saturn V? High-speed train, cross-channel ferry, space rocket, hot air balloon. It was a space rocket. Why are you so sure? I think I remember it. Final answer? Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer, you've got £2,000. <laughs> Uh, Apollo moon missions, among other things. What have you told the kids that Daddy is liable to bring home? Have you sort of told them? Uh, you nothing. Say? Nothing is the answer to that. What? No, no, no. I mean, I've told them to expect Zippo. So a little harsh, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they, um, you know, expectation of a million quid. You know, it's uh, it's not going to happen. Okay, well, that's probably probably wise actually. Right now, you got two thousand pounds. 
Uh, you got all three lifelines. Question number seven is for 4,000. The song Get Me to the Church on Time is featured in which musical? Why are you looking at me like that? You know the answer. I think so. Can you tell me? My Fair Lady. See if it comes up. Brigadoon. My Fair Lady. Gigi. Camelot. It's My Fair Lady. Final answer. It's the right answer. You've got £4,000. <laughs> Great musical on in town at the moment in London with Matthew McCutcheon. Uh, right, you've got 4,000. This is for 8,000. Going up a bit steeply here. Just be aware the drops get a bit sharp. You lose 3,000 here. You've got 1,000 guaranteed. You've got four at the moment. Question number eight is for 8,000. What does a cryptologist study? Churches, codes, sea creatures, architecture. Codes. You sure? <laughs> sure. That's the right answer. You've got 8,000 pounds. <laughs> Very good. No problem at all. It's all going worryingly well, isn't it? <laughs> right, Robert Bridges has got £8,000. He's also got all three lifelines still intact. Join us again after the break. Don't go away. Welcome back to the third part of tonight's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Don't forget, if you'd like to take part, check if you're eligible by seeing a summary of the rules on Teletext on ITV. You can visit the website. You can write to us at the usual address. But don't forget, of course, you've got to ring it to win it. Call 09068 444444 and you could be here as Robert Bridges is at the moment playing for £1 million. And actually, Robert, you're not, um, you're not a million miles away. You're seven away from a million. You've got £8,000 at the moment. You're two away from the next big milestone of £32,000. Uh, you've got all three lifelines left. Uh, question number nine is for 16,000. You've got 8,000 at the moment. Here it comes. The DB range is associated with which car manufacturer? Aston Martin, Jaguar, Morgan, Rolls Royce. The DB range is associated with which car manufacturer? Aston Martin, Jaguar, Morgan, Rolls Royce. It's worth 16,000 pounds. What are you thinking, Robert? I don't know the answer to this. Well, you've got a 50-50. You've got a uh, phone a friend. They can ask this audience. I think I'd like to ask the audience, Chris. OK. Ooh, I don't sound too pleased. Come on, audience. We can do this. Uh, question number nine is for £16,000. This is the question. The DB range is associated with which car manufacturer? A, B, C or D. All vote now. <laughs> 81 percent. Uh, high. Uh, saying Aston Martin. Um, 8 percent say Jaguar. 9 percent are saying Morgan. And uh, 2 percent think it's a Rolls Royce. It's up to you. 81% is quite hard. It's your call. Uh, I will certainly go with the, go with the majority, yeah. Are you going to play? I'll play. You're not up on your cards? I'm not. I'm I thought not. you'd be a bit of a petrol head. I thought you'd know yeah. these sort of things. Well, luckily, they all are. It's the right answer. You've got £16,000. <laughs> That's only the first lifeline you've had to use. As all uh, serious car fans know, DB, actually the initials of David Brown, who was the, uh, the owner, the original owner of Aston Martin. Right, you've got £16,000. Now, question number 10 is for £32,000. Give me a right answer to this. I'd be uh, delighted to give you a check on the spot. You can pay it in first thing Monday morning. You've got a 50 50, you've got to phone a friend. Have a look at number 10. You are six away from one million. You have two lifelines left. In the 18th century, Capability Brown was best known for designing what? You're doing that look again, aren't you? <laughs> Wigs. Has it come up yet? Not yet. OK, let's see. Pottery? No. Theatre sets? No. Gardens? Yes. Final answer? That's my final answer. That's absolutely right. £32,000. Rock play. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, your little, um... Ten-year-old and nine-year-old will be terribly proud of Daddy now with their little hands out as soon as Daddy comes home. You've got £32,000. Have a look. Take that. It's yours. Whatever. Take it. Put it in your pocket. Whatever you want to do. OK. Thank you. Question number 11 
Uh, Robert, you might as well play this. It's for £64,000. You can't lose. You're guaranteed that £32,000 cheque. Have a look at number 11. It's for £64,000. Which 20th century poet wrote The Wasteland? You're doing that. Look again. What are you waiting to see come up on the screen? Elliot. What, Elliot as in? As in tears. Elliot! Oh, Elliot! <laughs> what, as in Elliot, go home? OK, Rupert Brooke. <coughs> Ted Hughes. John Betjeman. T.S. Eliot. That's what I'll do. T.S. Eliot. Final answer? Final answer. Don't want a lifeline? You're quite happy? Quite happy. It's the right answer. You know it's the right answer. You've got £64,000. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on, let's have that one back. You, uh, you've obviously got the 32000 Put that one there. That's guaranteed. But at the moment, you've got this one for 64000 it's getting a bit serious, isn't it? Have a look at that one. Like that one? At this moment, you've got 64. Twice as good. We don't want to give you that. <laughs> we'll give you that with pleasure, but at the moment, you've got 64,000 pounds. Put it there. Next question is worth the same amount that Miles got to just now for 125,000 pounds. But you've got a phone a friend and you've got a 50 50 left. Here it is. Which of these is a type of flower? Graham, George, Gordon. Gerald. I think it's Graham. I think it's Graham. If you're wrong, you lose 32,000. You have got two lifelines. I may be getting confused with Graham Crackers. Gordon Flower doesn't sound right. I'd like to play Graham, Chris. Final answer. Final answer. Why do you think? Why on earth would a flower be called Graham? I'm just thinking of Graham crackers. Uh, nothing else sounds remotely right. I don't know how you got there, but it's the right answer. You got one hundred and twenty-five thousand pounds. Oh, what a night this is turning out to be! Hey, you know what, lads? I said we didn't want to give you that. We didn't want to give you that. We don't give you that. Pyah. Right. You've got £125,000. You're still guaranteed £32,000, but you've kept those lifelines back. You've got a 50 50, and, you, and you've got a phone a friend. Take that one. Take it, or shall I? I'll. Whatever. Uh, whatever. Thank okay. you very much. Your check. Now, some people don't like to hand them over, they feel superstitious. Hold it. You can walk away with that. Now, you're three away from £1 million. Serious stuff. Let's have a look at question number 13 of a possible 15. Which town provided the setting for TB's little house on the prairie? Hazelnut Creek, Coconut Bay, Walnut Grove, Chestnut Wood. It's worth a quarter of a million. You've got a 50 50, you can find a friend. Mmm. You got a clue? I, I, I think it's Walnut Grove. I think it's Walnut Grove. But I don't th think I want to risk it, so can I phone a friend? Sure. Who would know? Uh, Edwina. Edwina? Okay. Uh, do you want me to tell how much money's involved? Sure. Where's Edwina? Uh, Edwina is in London. Hello? Edwina? Yes? Hi, it's Chris Tarrant here, and who wants to be a millionaire? Good evening. Chris? Um, I've got Robert Bridges here. Right. Uh, he's doing rather well. Oh, good. He's doing very well. He's on £125,000. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Yes. Uh, your answer could be worth £250,000, a quarter of a million to him. Right. Serious business. OK, next voice here will be Robert's. OK. You tell her the question. There are four possible answers. One of those is the right answer. It's worth a quarter of a million. All right, darling? Right. OK, fingers crossed. Robert, 30 seconds. Good luck. Your time starts now. Edwina. Hi, Robert. Hi. Uh, which town provided the setting for TV's Little House on the Prairie? Hazelnut Creek, Coconut Bay, Walnut Grove, or Chestnut Wood? I really don't know. I can't think. Any sort of... Uh... Could you just read them again? Uh, no time. Uh, okay, thanks, Edwina. I'm so sorry. Mm. 
Um, Chris, I want to go with Walnut Grove. You know you lose £93,000 of your roll. Yeah. You got a 50 50, you don't want to play it. Yeah. Final answer? Final answer. When did you last see Little House on the Prairie? Oh, God, 25 years ago. Why do you think it was in Walnut Grove then? It's just, um, I don't know, something in the back of my mind. It was very good, it was the right answer. You got a quarter half a million! <laughs> Oh, God knows. Walnut Grove. Where will you stop looking round? She's fine. She's very happy. <laughs> a quarter of a million. Have you still got that cheque for one hundred twenty-five thousand um, pounds? I have. Would you hand it back, please? Thank you. Swap. Okay. Thank you got you. that. Well done. Right. You've still got a fifty-fifty. This is getting very, very serious. You've still got a fifty-fifty. You are two away from one million. At this moment, you've got £250,000. If you give me a wrong answer here, Robert, you lose £218,000. OK, fairly sobering. Have a look at question number 14. It's worth £500,000. Which of these African countries is situated south of the equator? Ethiopia, Nigeria, Zambia, Chad. Zambia. Not Chad. Not Chad. Been to Zambia? Yes. Were you south of the equator when you got there? I think so. Gonna play? I want to play. Final answer. Yeah. You just won half a million. <laughs> Give you that. Oh, five hundred thousand pounds. You were very cool. Are you still cool? Uh, no, no. You and me both. Right. Take that. Huge amount of money. Half a million. Now you know where you are, don't you? Yes. You are one away from one million pounds. You've got one, what could be absolutely crucial lifeline of fifty-fifty. You don't have to play this question, you can use that 50-50 and still walk away with £500,000. It's worth one million if you give me the right answer. If you give me a wrong answer here, you still get that £32,000, but you drop £468,000. Do you understand this, Robert? <laughs> it's a lot of money to risk. Yeah, serious stuff. OK, question number 15 for one million pounds. Here it is, you've got one lifeline. Which scientific unit is named after an Italian nobleman? Pascal, Ohm, Volt, Hertz. the 50-50, Chris. OK, you better take away two wrong answers. Leave Robert the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. One of those is worth a million pounds. I think it's Volt. Don't, wrong, you lose don't ask me why, I think, then. Uh, hmm. It's your call, but you do not have to play this question. Chris, I'd like to play Vault. <laughs> <laughs> Your call. You do not have to. There's nothing on my screen. You don't have to play. It's up to you. That's my final answer. Mm. 
We'll take a break. Join us again in a couple of minutes. The next part of tonight's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Do Not Go Away. Join us again. Welcome back to the final part of tonight's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Just for the break, Robert Bridges from Romsey was on £500,000. He did not have to play this question. He had one lifeline, he used up his 50-50. This was the question, and he knew he was risking £468,000. Which scientific unit is named after an Italian nobleman? He was left with Orm or Bolt. He decided to play, and he went for Bolt. It's the right answer. You just won one. Cool. I'm, in, I'm in shock. I was just slightly mad, but very cool. <laughs> fantastic. Good? Good for you? Oh, it's fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> Bless you. Give them a big hand. They go away. <laughs> One million pounds. Better off. Well played. Fantastic. Have a great night. How did Oh, it's such a great feeling when it happens. This show is shown all over the globe, but it's here in the UK. You get the biggest prize of all, £1 million sterling tax-free. It really does change people's lives. I'm sure it's changed theirs already, and the two kids, which is why it's the most successful quiz show in the history of television. Now, we have eight contestants left, hoping to do it all over again on tonight's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire?